Okay, page uh, 82, navigating the image area. To work most efficiently in Photoshop, you'll want to know how to zoom or magnify in and out of your image. Changing the zoom level allows you to select and paint accurately and helps you see details that you might otherwise have overlooked. The zoom function has a range from a single pixel up to 3,200% uh, enlargement, which gives you a lot of flexibility um, in terms of viewing your image. You'll start by using the view menu to reduce and enlarge the document view and end by fitting the entire document on your screen. So choose view zoom in to enlarge the display. Okay. Uh, you can press control and the plus sign. So hold down the control key and then the plus sign in the top row above the equal sign will zoom in. Um, and then control minus sign will zoom out. Um, and now you will fit the entire image on the screen. So you can go to view and fit on screen. And it fits the image to the, to the, to the whole window. You can also display artwork at the size it will print by choosing view print size. Okay, this is a pretty small file. So using the zoom tool, when you use the zoom tool, each click increases the view size to the next preset percentage and centers the display of the image around the location in the image that you clicked on. By holding the alt key down, you can zoom out of an image decreasing the percentage and making the image view smaller. The magnifying glass um, cursor is empty when the image has reached either its maximum magnification level of 3,200% or the minimum level of one pixel. So choose view fit on screen and then select the zoom tool. So over here this is the zoom tool and again tool tip will pop up so I've got that selected. Um, and click two times on the license plate to zoom in. So here's a license plate. Okay, I clicked twice. Um, you can also use key modifiers to change the behavior of the zoom tool. Press Alt while clicking with the zoom tool to zoom in and out. That zooms out. Alt zooms out. Uh, you can accurately zoom into the exact region of an image by clicking and dragging a marquee around that area in your image. To do this, you must dis disable a new zoom tool option. So uncheck the scrubby zoom checkbox in the zoom tools option bar to display this feature. So right here's scrubby zoom. Uncheck it. The scrubby zoom feature allows you to click and drag to zoom immediately. Um, in this example, you need a more predictable zoom area. With the zoom tool still selected, hold down the mouse and click and drag from the top left of the car's grill to the lower right of the bumper. Okay, um, you're, once you release the mouse, the area that was included in the marquee is now enlarged to fit the document window see it here better. Okay. Um, double click the zoom tool in the tools panel to return to 100% view. So right here's the zoom tool. I'm going to double click and that takes it back to 100%. Because the zoom tool is used so often it would be tiresome to continually have to change from the zoom tool back to the tool you were using. Um, read on to see how you can activate the zoom tool at any time without deselecting your current tool. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Select the Move tool at the top of the Tools panel. Right here is Move. Hold down the Control key and Space bar. Note that, so I'm holding down the Control key and Space bar. And it says, um, note that, okay, the Move tool is temporarily converted into Zoom. Okay, so here we got the move with the arrow, and then I hold down control space bar, and now it's zoom. And we can click on it. Okay, um, in while still holding down the control 
Okay. Um, so double click the, and then, it, okay, that turns it back to, so now we got the move tool, hold down the control space bar. We did that. Um, okay. And then choose view fit on screen. Okay. Um, using the hand tool, the hand tool allows you to move or pan around the document. It is a lot like pushing a piece of paper around on your desk. Select the zoom tool, then click and drag on the area surrounding the front of the car. Zoom tool, click and drag on the front area of the car, like this. Okay. Select the hand tool. Right here's the hand tool. Um, then click and drag to the right to push the picture to the right. Notice that when the hand tool is active, four view buttons appear in the options bar at the top of the work area that allow you to change your current view to actual pixels, fit screen, fill screen, or print size right up here. Select the zoom tool and hold the space bar. Zoom and hold the space bar. Notice that the cursor turns into a hand tool. Click and drag left to view the front of the car again by holding down the space bar, you can access the hand tool without deselecting the current tool. Double click the hand tool in the tools panel to fit the entire image on the screen. This is the same as using control zero. Um, so, and then you can see the shortcut keys there on page 84. Tabbed windows. In Photoshop, you have control over how your windows appear in the workspace. You can work with floating image windows or choose to tab your windows across the top of the workspace. In this section, you find out how to use a new tabbed workspace. If the mini bridge is not visible, choose File, Browse, and Mini Bridge. So let's try that. File, Browse, and Mini Bridge. And again, nothing's showing up, so we're probably just going to have to use Bridge for this. Maybe yours is working, hopefully. I'm going to do Browse and Bridge. Um, in the Navigate, double-click on the image PS0202. So right here, PS0202, double-click it to open it. The image is displayed as a separate tab within Photoshop. You can see right here, we've got, actually I've got the done one, um, the work one that I'm working on, and then this other one that I just opened, um, allowing you to click on the tab to switch between the different images like this. Okay, click on the, the 0202 one. And then click and drag the tab away from its tab position and release the mouse button. So I'm going to click on the 02021 and I'm going to click and drag the tab and let go. The second image is now floating. Click the title bar of the floating window and drag it up until your cursor is next to the tab of the other image. Right here. And then let go. Um, when you see a blue bar appear, release the mouse button. The image is now back to being a tabbed window. You can stop a window from tabbing accidentally by holding down the control key while dragging the floating window. If you would prefer not to take advantage of the tabbed window feature, you can choose Edit Preferences and then choose Interface. Interface. Um, in the Panels and Documents section, uncheck Open Documents as Tabs and press OK. We'll leave it um, we're going to leave it how it is. I'm not going to change that, so neither should you. Um, and then now page uh, 86, maximizing productivity with screen modes. Now that you can zoom in and out of your document as well as reposition it in your image window, it's time to learn how to take advantage of screen modes. You have a choice of three screen modes in which to work. Most users start and stay in the default, the standard screen mode, unless they accidentally end up in another. Screen mode controls how much space your current image occupies on your screen and whether you can see other Photoshop documents as well. The standard screen mode is the default screen mode when you open Photoshop for the first time. It displays an image on a neutral gray background for easy and accurate viewing of color without distractions and also provides a flexible work area for dealing with panels. Click on the tab of the work file. Um, and then press the tab key. The tools panel and other panels disappear, creating more workspace. Press the tab key again to bring the tools panel and other panels back. Press shift tab 
to hide the panel docking area while keeping the rest of the panels visible. Press shift tab again to bring the hidden panels back. Both the tools panel and the panel docking area should now be visible. As you position your cursor over various tools, you see a letter next to the right of the tool name and the tooltip. This letter is the keyboard shortcut that you can use to access the tool. You could, in fact, work with the tools panel closed and still have access to all the tools via your keyboard. You will hide the panels once more so that you can take advantage of a hidden feature in Photoshop. Press the tab key to hide the panels. Then position your cursor over the thin gray strip where the tools panel had been and press pause. Oh. Right here, the thin strip and press pause. I don't see pause. Um, Oh, and then pause. The tools panel reappears. Note that the tools panel appears only while your cursor is in the tools panel area and it disappears if you move your cursor out of that area, like this. Um, try this with the panel docking area to the right of the screen and watch as that also appears and disappears. Okay. By changing the screen mode, you can locate overextended anchor points and select more accurately up to the edge of your image. Changing modes can also help you present your image to clients in a clean workspace like this. Press the tab key again to display all the panels. Press F to cycle to the next screen mode, which is full screen mode with menu. Uh, this view surrounds the image out to the edge of the work area with a neutral gray even behind the docking area and displays only one image at a time without tabs and centered within the work area. You can access additional open images by choosing the image name from the bottom of the window menu. You can also change your screen mode by selecting view screen mode. So here's window. I can change. I can flip between them here um, and go. I'm, I'm going to go view screen mode and here's where you can see the three modes that you can be in. Um, notice that the gray area the pasteboard now extends to fill your entire screen and your image is centered within that area. One of the benefits of working in this mode is that it provides more area when working on images. This full screen mode, a favorite with multi multimedia users, it allows you to show others your document full screen with no distracting screen elements. All menus and panels are hidden automatically in this mode. However, they are still accessible by hovering the cursor over the area where the panels normally reside. Um, press F to cycle back into the standard screen mode. There's the full screen and here's you can see them pop up where they are. Okay, and then I'm going to hit F to go back to standard screen. Um, change screen mode button at the bottom of the tools panel um, and select standard screen mode or hold on this right here is uh, change screen modes in the tools panel and then you can pick them here too.